Do you understand the difference between sort key and list key? So, okay. uh, list key is basically the way in which the data is being distributed over the cluster. There is this uh, round robin fashion; it is being there. So, mm -hmm. uh, let's say if we apply a list key on a particular column, so mm -hmm. where the value for that particular column will be stored in the redshift, in which memory location, or we can say in which segment it will be stored, or in the way it, in which it will be stored, that determines the list key. List key determines that. And what is sort key? After the data has been distributed and stored, and in a particular node let's say we have 10 records so mm -hmm. how those records will be stored i mean if we apply a sort key on a particular column so in that particular node the data will be sorted based on that column so after being stored it will be sorted so that it will be easier to uh, find the record instead of scanning through the entire uh, node do you understand what is redshift spectrum? Yes, yes. Can, uh, can let me explain? I would start with redshift. So what happens with redshift is basically we have our storage and compute costs interconnected, right? We can't segregate that. But in redshift spectrum, what happens is the data is stored in S3. We create an mm -hmm. external table based mm -hmm. on that data. And that mm -hmm. external table will be again created. I mean, the external table is created. Now, when mm -hmm. we do want to perform a query, so mm -hmm. what we can do is we can refer this glue catalog. This glue catalog, the crawler that created the metadata for this, for the data that is stored in S3, we can basically query that and get the data and populate our S3, uh, I mean the external table that was created for Spectrum. So this is one of the most important advantage that we can uh, get from this glue catalog. Suppose you are facing too much cold start in your Lambda functions. How will you mitigate? Is there any solution okay, so you can think about? If it is very time constrained thing, so mm -hmm. what we can do is this thing called, I mean, provision concurrency. We can use that to handle this issue. Uh, let's say for our AWS account, we have thousand concurrent instances we can run for Lambda functions. Now, mm -hmm. what we can do is we can define a provision concurrency of 10 or 15. What will happen is whenever we invoke the Lambda function, so usually what happens is it creates the environment from the scratch. But now what will happen is for 15 of the instances, the environment is already be created. It's just a matter of time to execute. So it will directly execute the code. So basically the environment, all the imports already be done and it will be up and running. So as soon as you invoke the function, it will start executing. So this is the thing that we can incorporate to handle the cold start issue in Lambda. What is the basic difference uh, we have in data lake, data warehouse? So what happens is, as the data lake, we have uh, example of ADLS Gen 2. Now what happens is we can put any form of data like structured, semi-structured, unstructured, like we have video files, audio files or CSV, JSON, any kind of data we can put. So what happens is we are basically using the use of uh, ELT coming to data warehouse. So what happens is data warehouse is mostly used for the reporting or Power BI purposes so that the data analyst team can do some reporting and analysis. So here we can't put the unstructured data, raw data kind of things. First of all, we have to transform the data based on the certain schema, whatever the mm -hmm. schema the business requirement wants and then only we can load the data. So it puts the completely structured data. What is Databricks like? We have plain vanilla versions of Apache Spark. So what is the need or what are advantages that have happened after introduction of Databricks? Basically, Databricks allows us to, it is first of all programmer friendly and uh, if you want to work on a particular data, so you can work in the form of notebooks where, you know, the moment you execute, you can see the output and it is much interactive and you need not worry about any uh, cluster content configurations yeah. over there on the go you can pin up a cluster and just plug in it's like plug and play probably somebody else is also using that cluster you can just connect to that cluster and run like for analysis purpose it is quite useful for deployment sake probably we'll be using some kind of IDE but for initial analysis and uh, like you know exploratory data analysis and cleaning for all kind of things it is very useful Databricks is quite useful so, do you know something called change data fit feature? Yeah. What so, is that? 
exchange data feed is uh, basically uh, it comes with the delta lake uh, feature so it helps us with the problem uh, that we had was uh, whenever we are updating a record for example or deleting or anything inserting so we are not aware of what exactly was the previous value or what exactly did we update where exactly did we perform when did we perform this update and things like that so this change data capture will keep a note of every change that has happened in our data delta tables mm-hmm. so actually this re- makes it really easy for us to perform any type of absurd update operation and if you want to go back and check the history of whatever operations we may have performed we can uh, easily check that with the cdc what are the different kinds of trigger in ads present we have various kind of trigger like we have scheduling trigger then apart from that we have event based trigger and then we have tumbling window trigger these are the various kind of triggers present in ad what do you understand by the tumbling window tumbling window although i haven't used in in my real life as of now but what my understanding says is it's almost equivalent to what we can say as a scheduling event trigger only but what happens is in scheduling the event trigger we We can't capture these triggers in a series. Like let's say we do one partition in one go, then remaining something in other go. We can't put a series of steps here. But in tumbling window, we can put a series of step by doing small small works there. So it's the advanced version of what I believe is that uh, scheduled event trigger.